Yo, so today I'm going to be telling you guys how to improve your workflow and also explaining all of the shortcuts I use in my videos. So again, I got the little piece of paper pulled up here, but I have things that have nothing to do with FL and then things that are actually in FL. Again, pretty much like the Better Melodies video, but I'm going to switch the order to start off with the things that are in FL because I feel like that's a little more useful. All right, so I just have this basic triad made and the first shortcut that I use a ton is selecting a note by holding control and dragging. I do this a ton to just drag an individual note or to select a chord to move it around. How I move things around is by holding control and then the up or down arrows. That moves it up an octave or down an octave depending on which arrow you push. And then if you do the same thing but holding shift instead of control, it moves it up a different cell. So I really use this, like I'll make a melody in D sharp minor then I'll go through, I'll select everything, and then I'll pitch it up and down like that just to find a different pitch that might suit that melody better. The next thing is selecting a note and then shift clicking on it. This will duplicate the note and then you can pitch it up or down. And the reason I uh, select it first is because if you just duplicate it by holding shift and clicking, that note's still there, but, but it's a little bit harder to drag it around. It's just easier if you select it first. So next, this is the one I just learned like two or three days ago, but I've already been using it a ton and it's sped up my process a bunch. Instead of just laying down a chord pattern, like I'll just copy some chords over here and uh, change the notes around. But instead of waiting for that to play through, you can hold Alt and right click to pull up the playback tool. So you can just quickly click and you'll know what chords go together and stuff like that. It's oddly really helpful. So the next one I also learned pretty recently, and I'm going to use the piano for this one, but I have these two chords, same as the mallet, but if we go and listen to this, it's kind of bland. So something I've learned is you hold shift and then you find the where the chords meet, and then you can drag the end and the start of the two chords to kind of find a different position to spice up your melodies. So for instance, this might sound better than just having it there. And that's just a quick way to kind of move around your chord progressions and stuff. I'll just mention this real quick, but I'm sure everybody knows that Control Z is undo and Control Alt Z is multiple undo. So if I were to place this note, I'll place like a couple. So I have these five notes here. If I do Control Z, it'll get rid of the last change I made, which was moving that note so they're all in line. But if I do Control alt z it'll go back multiple times. And it'll also pull up that because I have an NVIDIA graphics card. Next thing kind of has to do with the tools. So the ones I really use for making a melody is the playback one, which I already showed the shortcut for that. And I use the slice tool, which is C. So that's a really easy way to get to the slice tool if you just tap C. And then when you're using this to get straight cuts, I hold shift and it'll make it in a straight line rather than just slicing and it'll go anywhere you want. So you might get some kind of wacky slices if you do something like that and they're all out of line, but that also might be a good thing. And then to go back to the pencil or the drawing tool, press P and I'll go back to that and you can make normal notes. All right. So the next thing, if I wanted to copy this uh, pattern over to the piano, you could do it by going here, right clicking, and then copy and then paste it over there. Or you could do control A, which is uh, select all. So it'll select all the notes I have and then control C, go to that piano pattern. I'll just delete what I have by pressing delete and then control V, which will now paste this over to the piano. So that's just a quicker way to do that. Uh, next thing. So again, control A, select all, but then after that, you can do control B and that'll put the uh, pattern that you have over uh, the exact same amount. You can also do this by right clicking on the numbers up here or well, right click hold and then dragging. That'll give you the same selection. You can also select a note, control B, it'll copy it over. Same thing with the chord. Now we're going to go back over to the piano and the way I record things, you can press R to just pull up the record, but I'm not really sure if it's on the right setting. So I always just click up there, click notes and automation. 
but I'm just gonna play something in real quick for like an example. So now we have this pattern and you can see it's all off the grid, which I always recommend leaving it that way. But for an example, it's not a piano pattern now. It's like supposed to be like a plucky mallet and you don't want it strummed. You can do control A shift Q to quantize. And now if you look at everything, it's all snapped to the grid, which is really helpful. And another thing is if you do control A shift Q and it's all quantized, but then you want to like drag these notes over here and you'll notice that they're not the size of a cell, so it's overlapping here and it's not making it there. You can select notes and do Shift D to make them a size of a cell. So now it'll be all nice and even. Another thing I'm surprised I haven't mentioned is if you have, I'll just delete that top line and move this over. But say these chords are exactly where you want it. You can put a note at the end and do Control L to stretch everything to each other which doesn't really work if it's strummed, but it'll work if it's all quantized, which is pretty helpful. So those are all like the shortcuts I pretty regularly use for like laying out melodies, but there's also some ones to get to these tools a little better, like the arpeggiator, the strum and stuff like that. So if I wanted to chop this up and make it like a uniform roll, I'd go Alt U to bring up this chopper. And then I can turn this time knob and it'll change the size of the chops which is really helpful for doing hi-hats and stuff. Or you could use the paint tool, which I don't really use, mostly because I don't do drums, but th this is what I usually use if I do do drums for like hi-hats and stuff. But it's also nice for like hyper-pop melodies doing really quick rolls and stuff. But if you do Control A, Alt A, it'll bring up the arpeggiator, which I find is really great if you're having a rough time coming up with a melody or anything like that. It'll just kind of give you some new inspiration and maybe spark a new idea. You can also get some really wacky stuff if you mess with like the settings and everything. And depending on what sound you have selected, you can like cut off the end times and stuff. Next one you guys see me all do all the time is Alt S to strum. So this will move the start times off the grid, just like you're playing a normal piano because no one's going to actually play perfectly quantized. So this will humanize it. And if you want to humanize it further, do Alt R and then you'll randomize the velocities. But I'll go ahead and pull this up real quick. You can see they'll just get randomized depending on which direction you go. Yeah, so those are pretty much all the things I do very regularly. And then for stuff like mixing, so I have like these two instruments, but say you have a whole melody, you can click on one, shift click on another to also select that. Go over to the mixer and click route selected channels which uh, I find control shift L is kind of hard to do, so I don't really use that. So that would be kind of for mixing. And then if you're arranging that melody that you've just mixed, you can do split by channel and then do the same shift click thing that I said earlier and drag it all in to the playlist so you can arrange it. You can also do that up here, same thing. Also another thing, a quick render is audio clip. You right click right there which aren't really shortcuts, but they're good things to know where they are. All right, so that's pretty much it for the shortcuts portion. Now we're gonna get into like the other stuff that's not really in FL, but can still help you improve that workflow and that productivity. So the first two things I'll say is, uh, they were in the other video, but learning a scale and playing it out on the MIDI, really easy things. And I find that playing it out on the MIDI just allows me to like, just put what I'm thinking into my hands and it's sometimes easier that way rather than clicking it in note by note and then playing it back really quick. Another thing that can help you with your workflow tremendously is just knowing what sounds are good. So you'll notice that I always go for that thing I labeled favorite starter sound, but that's pretty much the Nick Mira blunt mallet and like another dry mallet with like an EQ on it, but you can just use the blunt mallet. The next three things kind of go together. And the first one is finding out what you like. So when you make beats or make, or you're a producer, whatever you want to call it, there's a ton of different lanes you can fall into. For example, being a loop maker, just doing drums, doing everything, focusing on engineering, focusing on like mixing and mastering. There's a ton of other different things too. But if you find what you like, I find that it'll be easier to like push yourself and excel in that area and really just focus and become really good in that specific area 
and then network and find other people that are good in those other specific areas so that you guys can work together and collaborate and overall your music will be better. The next two things really go together, which is splitting up your work and setting a schedule. So for example, my schedule kind of goes uh, send out loops on Monday and then videos get posted Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then I make the videos of Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I'm kind of splitting up my work throughout the week. So I'm not just kind of like being super lazy for two days and then having to catch up on all the other days. So it's all kind of spread out and it makes it easier to get things done. Also, this kind of gives you a deadline. So when I send out my loops on Monday, I feel the rest of the week that I'm like, oh, I got to get to Monday. I got to have enough loops and it helps and gives me a deadline. So the next four things pretty much have nothing to do with music whatsoever. So the first one, go outside, have other activities other than music to relax yourself so you're not always focusing on looking at a computer screen. Next thing, exercise and eat right. I always find if I'm eating right and I'm exercising, I'll get more focused. Cause like I have a break in my day and it's really weird where I have like two hours in the middle of the day. So I'll go lift and then I'll make a melody. And then I'll always find that that melody is the best melody I make that entire day. Cause I'm very focused and I feel good after lifting. Next thing, very important, remove distractions. So basically, your phone pretty much. So what I do to kind of combat this is I either listen to a podcast or a video on a super low volume so it doesn't distract me and I'll have my phone out of sight so I can just like kind of hear it or it'll be on the charger which I keep over there on the back side of my MIDI. So if I'm like working on something it's all the way back there and I won't really think about it. So the last one is having a clean area which I kind of recently learned about but if you keep your area clean there's less things to look at less things to get distracted by and overall it just feels good if you're in a clean space there's not like cans on the desk or anything which is actually a really poor example because I have like a bottle and a can right now but that's just because I'm making a video and I need something to drink so my mouth doesn't make get dry. Yeah, so that's going to be pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is going to be horrible to edit because I repeated myself like five times per topic. But hopefully it uh, turned out good. Uh, let me know what other kind of videos you want to see. Next week, I'm pretty sure it's going to be all hyperpop because I'm taking a break from it this week so I can gather some new information. But yeah, I'll play a beat right now that I made some time ago. Thanks for watching. I'll play that right now.